Well, originally I wanted to release another MMO video today, but I'm having too much fun with that video, and so I'm delaying it. Instead, today we can talk about the community's favorite topic, the Darkin. We know that the champion after the Monster Hunter is going to be a Darkin, and I do expect that champion to push the lore of the Darkin a bit more forward. But thankfully, Legends of Runeterra got a whole new expansion that is themed around the Darkin. And there, from the lore of the cards, we learned a very crucial new information. And that's what today's video is about. We're gonna talk about the new main Darkin called Zolani, we'll talk about how she is connected to the already established lore, and we'll mention where this is heading. But before we start diving into this, for those of you who don't know or those of you who forgot, let's very quickly summarize who the Darkin even are. Simply said, when the Shreeman Empire rose to power, they started using the Sun Disk to reflect celestial magic into their soldiers, and by doing that they would turn them into the Ascended, also known as the Golden God Warriors. The Ascended were loyal to the Shuriman Emperor, but after they were sent to war with Ikathia, where they had to fight the mind-bending creatures of the Void, their mentality started breaking a bit. Unfortunately, that was followed by Zerath betraying Azir, killing him and essentially destroying the entire empire. This left the Ascended without a leader, and since they were already going a little bit crazy, they all started turning against each other. On top of all of this, the Darkin started using blood magic to improve their own bodies, so that they would be stronger than the other ones. This really broke their minds, and this is how the Darkin Wars were started, where the Darkin spread all around Runeterra, and they simply started fighting for dominance. Later, in the Twilight of the God story, it was revealed that the Celestials realized that the Darkin were a threat to the mortal world, and so the aspect of Twilight came down, and using the Chalikar, which is Sivir's original blade, she absorbed the Darkin inside that weapon. Unfortunately, she didn't absorb all of them, and so all the Darkin that managed to run away had to be sealed separately inside special weapons so only those who were not absorbed by the aspect of Twilight were turned into the Darkin weapons. Now, throughout this entire story there was always a mystery. We never knew what was happening with the blood magic, we didn't even know where it came from. And that changes today, because that is exactly what the new Darkin Zolani reveals. As a fun fact, Zolani was first mentioned in the Faceless God story, we can even see her in the story's art. This statue is a massive piece that is carved into a mountain, and in the latest cinematic you can actually see Talia destroy that statue to bury a void rift. Anyway, the point of the Faceless God story is that some people delved underneath that place to figure out what this legendary Zolani looked like. Apparently, the face of that statue was destroyed by the most cruel of the Darkin, which would either be Rast or Aatrox, we are still not sure. But also in that story we learned that Zolani was a healer, and that is gonna be crucial for today. But super quickly, with the base story laid out, let me blitz through the other four Darkin revealed in these cards. First of all there is the Darkin Ballista. The description of this card tells us that this is a massive Darkin weapon that was discovered underneath the territory of Noxus. And we can see that after people pulled it up, this Darkin weapon actually came alive. And it is revealed that this ballista is actually Naganeka of Zoretta. Those of you who have a great memory may remember Naganeka from the Twilight of the God story. She was one of the Darkin who were present when the aspect of Twilight started devouring all the Darkin, and she is one of those who managed to escape. Her description says, Ancient muscles flexed once more. The warrior heard her general's call, and knew where she was needed. South, in the lands she once known as Ikathia. Unfortunately, we are not sure who is that general. We know that a lot of the Ascended host was led by Nasus, but I'm not sure if Nasus would be the one calling all the Darkin towards Ikathia. In fact, I don't know why anyone would be calling the Darkin towards Ikathia. To fight the Voidborn? Maybe, but the Darkin are crazy so they wouldn't really care about that. 
This is just a blind theory, but this might be teasing another Darkin to come in the future. And that would be Setaka. Setaka was an Ascended warrior who actually led the other Ascended. She was a general, so it would make sense if it was her. But she did die after she was consumed by the Void Beasts. So who knows, maybe Setaka comes back in the future with a voidy form. Maybe she would be luring them all to get devoured in Ikathia. But that's just a blind theory. Anyway, did you notice how she looks a little bit like a chicken? Even though in the Twilight of the Gods story she was described as a serpent-like Darkin? Well, the theory goes that since the ballista was found near a farm, a chicken happened to touch the ballista, which was followed by Naganeka taking over its body. The other new Darkin comes from the Darkin Halberd. Straining against the confines of his cell, Tarosh heard his general's call. He would answer it, one way or another. Legend says Tarosh was mere moments from destroying Zolani, when the Darkin were set upon by the Dargonians. As centuries passed, he sensed the land around him become corrupted, tainted with rot and perpetual stench of death. How he dreamt of steeping Zolani in the same suffering once he had claimed his freedom. So yes, Tarosh is another Darkin. Yes, he did get the memo, but also you can see that he didn't really like Zolani. And you can see that he is referencing blood magic by mentioning that the land around him became corrupted, tainted with rot and perpetual stench of death. And this then takes us to the Darkin Lodestone. Perhaps those who imprisoned the Darkin thought that burying the legendary warrior Horazi within an orb of star metal would sufficiently dim her irascible will. But as her general stirred, so too did Horazi, who found that even Targon's ascended protectors could be tempted by promises whispered from afar. Once again, you can see that her general stirred. So either they are all actually pointing towards Zolani, or Setaka is actually somehow alive. And then we actually get to see Horazi herself. Horazi was gifted a high perspective in the burning celestial matter that imprisoned her. She glimpsed the secrets of the cosmos and the infinite passage of time that preceded and followed her existence. She learned so much and yet her hatred towards the coward Zolani remained. Again, you can see that everyone hates Zolani. So let's learn about why that is. It all starts with Cain. Now, Cain in Legends of Runeterra is not fully canon because of how the Shadow and the Darkin works here. Essentially, based on your gameplay, you can choose which storyline happens to Cain. He either gives in to the Darkin or he beats the Darkin and he becomes the Shadow Assassin. So both versions of his story are a what-if scenario. But the overall story arc still reveals what is going on with the Darkin. It starts with the Keeper of the Box. Now, despite them looking different, I assume this box is the same box we saw in the comic. Here it just looks more interesting. Essentially, the box reveals that there is another Darkin weapon in Ionia. This is later confirmed by the Shadowblade fanatic, who confirms it to Kane himself. In the darkness, he'd seen it a weapon to cut through the shadows. And in that moment, he heard a voice call to him. Distant, but powerful. He followed it to Cain, the truth of its words guiding him. Fun fact, the Shadowblade fanatic might actually be Ren Shadowblade. The two look exactly the same, except the Shadowblade fanatic just fully gave in to the shadows. Anyway, following these leads, Cain arrives at the Vuju Blademasters. In Master Yi's cards, you can see that Master Yi is trying to pass the Vuju onto other people. And one of them is Yun, the prodigy. And she is the key to the storyline. In the Noxian Defector and the Ranger Knight Defector cards, you can see how Kane's group attacks the Blade Masters. And in one of the what if scenarios, you can see that Kane actually kills most of the Blade Masters leaving only Master Yi and Yun alive. And this is where Yun's dark storyline is unleashed. First of all, there is the card Momentous Choice. Angry tears stream down Yun's face as she surveyed the bodies littering the ground. She had failed them. She had failed her master. 
and now only one choice remained. This is followed by the Darkened Bloodletters, which are the Darkened weapons themselves. As the fighting raged on, Yun, desperate and badly wounded, turned to the voice whispering in her thoughts. You will never die, it said, soft as summer rain, because I will never let you. Interestingly enough, you can hear the exact same whispers in the Heedless Resurrection card. But then Yun actually picks up the blades, and this is revealed in the utter devastation. As she took hold of the weapons, her humanity fled, and in its place a hateful essence filled the emptying vessel that was once the student Yun. It washed through her, over her, around her, and out into the world stirring the slumbering Darkin. And after that, you can see that Zolani took over Yun's body. And this card explains everything. Shurima's Ascended were doomed the moment they took up arms against the Void. This was an enemy that could never be beaten. And while the God Warriors were all but guaranteed immortality, their minds were never as resilient. Madness consumed them all. Zolani, once a beloved and gifted healer, began using her hemomantic powers to control her brethren. And soon enough, the hatred between her and Aatrox boiled over into civil war. So you can see that the Darkin Wars began because Zolani gave blood magic to the Darkin, but she was actually using it to control them all. Because the only way to secure peace among the rampaging Darkin was to control them all. And it was also confirmed that yes, the one who destroyed her statue was Aatrox. In the other devastation you can see that it mentions how Zolani stirred, which was also referenced by one of the other Darkin. So I wonder if Zolani was actually the general that everyone is talking about, and therefore they all gathered because they just wanna kill Zolani. But I don't think that's the case because this is not happening in Ikathia, and Naganeka mentioned that she was heading towards Ikathia. So the general is still a mysterious person to us. But at least Zolani revealed a really cool piece of the Darkin history. She revealed that she was the cause of the Darkin Wars, and she is the one who came up with Hemomancy. But as to where her blades are now, we are not really sure. Yes, Legends of Runeterra is built upon canon lore, but until we get a story in the core universe that would confirm things from Legends of Runeterra, the cards are not necessarily considered as fully canon. So really what we should accept from this is that Zolani's blades are likely somewhere in Ionia. In the future Kane will probably be interested in getting them, and so will Rast. Speaking of which, why don't we have a look at how Rast reacts when he picks up Zolani's blades. Rast let out a triumphant howl, years of waiting, yearning and now he was finally free. He lifted Zolani's blades and put them to his tongue, savoring the taste of fresh blood. He closed his eyes in bliss and a smile crept across his face for the first time in millennia. The reaping had begun. Connected to this, we can also mention one final thing. Rast actually had a friend, and that is the Forsaken Bakai. The little description mentions how both of them had their Ritual of Ascension at the same time. But as Rast became an Ascended, his friend was deemed unworthy and he became a Bakai. So it's interesting to see how all of the places are interconnected. Anyway, that is it for this video. I'm just glad we got to talk about the Darkin again, because I wonder if this is all going to be connected to the new champion. Maybe the new champion is going to be the general, or maybe this is actually talking about Nasus and I'm just making up really weird theories. Or maybe I actually missed a piece of the story. I hope I'm not wrong here. That is entirely possible, there is a lot of lore around the Darkin. But one thing is certain, if it wasn't for Zolani, if she actually let the Targonian Celestials deal with all the Darkin, everything would be fine. But more than that, if the new champion is actually a dog, it's gonna be amazing if it becomes the general of the Darkin. 